here are four concepts that have helped me take my investments to the next level in the last 12 months. Now, this is something that I've really been studying because I understand that there are certain investors that outperform the market. There are certain investors that perform better than other people. And I want to find out what those things are. Maybe it's just a stroke of luck. Maybe it's because they know something that I don't, but I'm always studying these people. And one of the things that I've noticed is that many of the people who have been very, very successful in the investment world are what I call contrarian investors. So number one, the number one thing that I've done is that I've become a contrarian investor. So what is a contrarian investor? A contrarian investor is somebody who looks at the market and they look at what the mass majority of people are doing. So for example, if the mass majority of people believe the price of Bitcoin or the price of gold or, or the price of real estate even is going to go up as a contrarian investor. My natural inclination is to think that the market is going to go down. Yes, all the signs might be pointing that the real estate market is going up and it's going to continue going up and it's just going to keep going and going and going. But as a contrarian investor, I'm looking for signs that are going to indicate that maybe just maybe there's going to be some sort of turnaround. And while everybody's positioned to go up, I'm going to be prepared and I'm going to be waiting for that fall in the real estate market. Now, for some of you, that might seem negative and you might be thinking, oh, wow, this guy is just a really cynical person and he likes to invest into negative things. Well, in my opinion, I do think that there are some negative aspects of contrarian investing. However, what if you just flip it? What if everybody thinks the market is going down? Right. And everybody's like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not investing in real estate right now. I don't see any opportunity. The real estate market is bad. The prices of homes are just plummeting. It's just such a bad time to invest. Well, if 99 percent of people think it's a bad time to invest as a contrarian investor, for me, that's a sign that maybe the market's about to turn because investment psychology is very interesting. And the market doesn't turn until everybody thinks that there's no way that it could turn. It's usually not predictable. If it was predictable, then everybody would be a billionaire. Everybody would know that, oh, the market's about to turn. So I'm going to buy now. Oh, the market's about to come back down. So I'm going to sell now. That's investing. You buy low, you sell high. However, because people don't have that information, because it's not obvious, you have to be a contrarian investor. And I firmly believe that if you're investing in a contrarian way, if you're using contrarian investment strategies, there is a high chance that you're going to be very profitable on some investments where even the mass majority of people are losing money. And that's something that I've learned about other investors who are very, very successful. And I've been able to implement these strategies, even in my own investments, to take my investing to the next level and to become a better investor. Now, the second thing that I've learned and that I've implemented in my portfolio is the power of compounding. Now, compounding might seem like a fairly simple topic, but it really gets interesting if you start compounding interest, especially over a large amount of time. Now, if you're just trying to compound in one year or two years or something like that, yes, it is interesting. Yes, it does technically favor you and you are making more money that way. But if you start looking at a span of 10 years, maybe a span of 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and you start compounding, oh man, that's where the math gets really interesting. It really, really starts adding up that compound interest over time. It starts adding up very significantly and that's life changing money right there. If the only factor that we had to change was time and compound interest got that much more interesting for me, that's a sign that I need to start investing right now. In fact, I should have started investing yesterday. So I knew that I had to start investing as fast as I possibly could because I wanted to take advantage of compound interest. Compound interest is something that I want working for me, not against me. So I wanted to have as much runway as I possibly could when investing and I started investing immediately. The sooner that you can start investing, the more runway you potentially have with compound interest. And that's in your benefit because compound interest starts adding up and you start making more money. The third thing that I like to focus on are high potential investments is what I call them. Now, these high potential investments are investments that might not be so common. So if you think about the investments that are really popular and by the way, this is very similar to contrarian investing, but it's not quite contrarian investing. High potential investments are things that are still early on or things that are still developing or emerging markets or investments that just are low key. They haven't been popularized. So these investments aren't mainstream. Not everybody is investing in these investments. So if we know that, OK, investment X, Y, Z is not popular at all, but there's a high potential there. I know that if I invest into that, 
there is a chance that I'm going to potentially lose money, but there's also a chance that I'm going to make a lot of money. So if I focus on those investments that are not so popular, maybe they're a little bit more low key. Now, typically there is more risk with investments like that, but there is a large opportunity to make money because it's not a large cap stock. It's not you know, Microsoft. It's not Amazon. It's nothing like that. It's a maybe a startup company that you don't even know if it's going to succeed, but there is opportunity for you to own a significant stake in that company. So if they do succeed, if they do end up performing really well, you would be benefiting greatly from owning a percentage of that company, especially if they have a liquidity event or something like that in the future where they sell and you get a portion of the profits. And finally, one thing that I've really, really been focusing on is investing into physical assets. Now, this might seem kind of obvious to some of you, but if you think about it, a lot of people have been very successful investing into real estate or things that are very, very easy to understand. And it's a physical asset. You can go there, you can see the house, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can take pictures of it. It's not a digital asset, right? And when we invest into stocks, for example, it's not like something that you're just going to like go and see down the street. It's not a house, right? Yes, the stock market can be analyzed on your computer. Yes, you can see all these things that it is a real company at the end of the day. However, I think that one of the best investments is investing into something that's physical that you can see and touch and feel. Because if you can find the right balance, you can find an investment that has a dual benefit for you. Number one, you're building equity in the asset. So let's say you took out a loan to buy this asset. So you put in a certain amount of money and then you finance the rest. Pretty simple, very straightforward. Now you're making payments on this loan, right? So every time you make a payment on this loan, you are paying off a certain amount of this asset. As you're paying off this asset, you're building equity in this asset. So now you have more money sitting inside that whatever you bought, right? Could be a house, it could be maybe a private jet, could be anything. So now you're building up equity. And on top of that, if you buy something at the right price and you're able to maybe rent it out or uh, provide it to clients as a service, whatever it is, you're able to get potentially even cash flow from it. So that's one thing that I learned to invest in the physical assets and things that I'm building equity in and also cash flowing from. I want to make sure that I have both. I don't want just cash flow. I don't want just equity. I want to have both because equity is nice, but it doesn't necessarily pay your everyday expenses. Cash flow is nice, but it doesn't build long term wealth through equity. So you need to have a blend of those two. And that's how real wealth is built. And so, guys, these are the four things that I've done to improve my portfolio. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.